UCLA scored the first touchdown of the game and scored the last. Unfortunately for the Bruins, of the other eight touchdowns scored in OU's victory over the Bruins, seven of those TDs belonged to the Sooners. 49-21, the game really wasn't that close. The Bruins uh, did manage a couple of uh, late touchdowns, but that was against the OU reserves. The Sooners, yeah, overcoming a sluggish start. And, you know, first of all, um, talking about the Oklahoma offense, they found out that, you know, UCLA was not going to lose this game because of OU's ground attack. And, you know, speaking of the ground, we'll talk more about Rodney Anderson later. Um, but UCLA, give them credit, they were able to make it difficult for OU to run the ball, occupying those running lanes, committing the linebackers, you know, Jalen Phillips, um, Lucier South, and at times, you know, using those uh, defensive backs as well to their advantage to really contain OU's ground game. In fact, it was Kyler Murray who was the leading rusher for the Sooners. A sensational game for Kyler, by the way. Um, leading the team in rushing, 69 yards on just nine carries. Two touchdowns on the ground. And by the way, three touchdowns through the air, throwing for over 300 yards in the contest, 19 of 33. Um, he was terrific in the contest. Had one pick um, in the second half. That was a ball that was uh, big time underthrown. You give credit to UCLA for making it hard on the Sooners to run, but... Problem that UCLA had, though, they gave too much cushion to the OU receivers. It didn't matter if it was Lamb, it didn't matter if it was Brown, it didn't matter if it was Calcaterra, it didn't matter if it was A.D. Miller, it didn't matter who it was. The Sooners were going to get yards through the air. Third down, overall, a good game for the Sooners. Other than that early third quarter stretch where the Sooners struggled offensively, um, third down was terrific, 7-12, keeping the chains moving and overcoming the slow start. Special teams, by the way, they can be a hindrance, but they can also be a help. That's why they call them special teams. And the Sooners, once again, using special teams as a weapon. We saw the uh, punt block last week for a touchdown. This week, Sooners trailing 7 nothing, No problem. Trey Brown almost taking it to the house, taking it all the way to the 14 of the Bruins, leading to Oklahoma's first touchdown, short 14-yard drive. And then later in the game, C.D. Lamb, who was sensational, seven catches for 146 yards and a score but also, too, had a punt return that almost went all the way, but it was set up another score. Um, the Sooners in this game, offensively, again, the running game, of course, we, we've seen them run the ball better, but passing-wise, it, it, it was a solid effort. And I do think UCLA's defense, um, I do think that they can play, but uh, the Sooners just had too many weapons offensively. And this UCLA team, keep in mind, there was a graphic that Fox showed today that is really alarming. It's it's one of the uh, top teams in the country in undergraduates who play the game. Okay, I think Illinois is number one, but I think UCLA not far behind. Seventy two percent of their players um, are underclassmen, and they have a two deep rotation where they play a lot of freshmen and sophomores. And I think if the projection holds true, next year's Bruin team will return at nineteen starters. And remember, the Sooners play at UCLA next year, so. You know, Chip Kelly knows that this year is a learning ex experience big time. Um, and by the way, I think that um, Darius Pickett, their fantastic defensive back, he's going to be a star in the NFL. Secondary, I didn't think was bad for UCLA, but giving up way too much cushion. And, of course, the big play in the first half uh, by um, Hollywood Brown on the third and 14 play near midfield. Nice pass by Murray. Hollywood with the catch around the hash mark, and then cutting to the middle, the safety, whoop, missed him, and it was clear sailing after that. As far as the OU defense goes in this particular game, uh, they were terrific, okay? Um, other than that big play they gave up in the first half, you know, off of the Caleb Wilson, by the way, the son of former OU player from the late 80s and early 90s, Chris Wilson, um, Caleb um, with a 60-yard play in which nobody covered him, and we saw Khalil Hogden uh, get a little bit hogtied by the stiff arm that Wilson uh, supplied, which led to the first score of the game. But other than that, the defense for Oklahoma handling the um, the UCLA offensive line. You can tell it's a very young UCLA OL, the center. He's a freshman, just a lot of experience. And today the defensive line, I mean, you kidding me? Ronnie Perkins, another nice game. Neville Gallimore, back-to-back -back solid efforts. Curtis Bolton was absolutely incredible. And we saw 
um, Mike Stoops, the defensive coordinator for the Sooners, dialed up the pressure, um, blitzing, and it led, by the way, to six sacks. And a lot of people are going to think that UCLA is not good at quarterback, okay, because, you know, of Dorian Thompson-Robinson uh, getting hit quite a bit. But you have to remember that's not necessarily his fault. And remember, too, he is a true freshman. And from what I heard, and I don't know if this is accurate, but I heard this more than once, Thompson-Robinson only started one year in high school football coming out of uh, Las Vegas. He is the QB, according to Chip Kelly, that fits UCLA's um, style of offense. So um, I, I think the future looks bright for him. He's got one heck of an arm, but today um, just didn't really have much of a shot as far as the passing attack. I thought, by the way, the Sooners had excellent uh, rush defense, really limiting the Bruins um, in this matchup, just 134 rushing yards for UCLA. The Sooners, you know, I think the only Sooner fans that might be upset about this game are the ones that gave the points um, in this matchup, which the Sooners end up being a 29-point favorite. The late UCLA touchdown made it 49-21, so the Sooners uh, did not cover. But other than that, um, a, a solid performance for the Sooners, overcoming the slow start and, and having control of this game. But it was the OU defense, I thought, did one hell of a job. 346 yards they gave up. That really is not a true depiction of the dominance because, again, UCLA had a couple of drives in that fourth quarter which led to touchdowns, and it was largely, like I said, against the backups for OU. So the Sooners now 2-0. Of course, the news not all great in Sooner land. We saw Rodney Anderson um, get injured. I think it was the final play of the first quarter uh, when the Sooners were driving, and we saw Anderson, after he went down, favoring a knee. And the knee injury, by the way, it looked like it occurred before contact occurred. It looks like when Anderson was trying to cut up, that's when the injury occurred. We didn't see him for the rest of the game on the field. We saw him in the second half on the sidelines wearing a knee brace. Um, I'm not a doctor, so I dare not say um, how severe um, it is. And it might have been the precaution to put the knee brace on. But we'll know a little bit more in the upcoming days about Rodney Anderson. Obviously, the Sooners' number one back and an All-American, according to some of the preseason publications. This will mean that you're going to have to have Trey Sermon, you're going to have to have Marcellus Sutton, um, TJ Pledger, who, who had a nice second half for OU. Um, these guys will really have to step up even more in case um, the injury is not short-term. But the Sooners, as far as Rodney Anderson, it's just unfortunate um, because this guy has been um, plagued with injury. Of course, a leg injury a while back and a neck injury. Both injuries forced him to miss full seasons. And you just cross your fingers that this injury is not like that. Again, we don't know. It's too early to say. But he did have to wear a knee brace um, in the uh, second half watching the game from the sideline. Sooners 2-0. and And as far as um, the Sooners next game, well, it's going to be their first conference game of the year. It's going to be the first road game when they go to Ames for an early kickoff against Iowa State. Even as we speak, playing for the Cyhawk Trophy against Iowa. And keep in mind, Iowa State did not play last week. They were supposed to, but their game um, got uh, canceled because of bad weather. So really right now, we don't know a lot about Iowa State, but we do know the past history with the Cyclones, especially recently. Last year, the Sooners, of course, losing their only regular season game to Iowa State. And this time, you got to play them on the road. Last year's Iowa State team beat OU, beat TCU, and put a scare into both West Virginia and and Oklahoma State end up having an eight-win season, which is remarkable for Ames, Iowa, and their fantastic coach, Matt Campbell. So it's OU and Iowa State next week. For UCLA, again, it's a very young team. They got off to a nice start, but OU just had more weapons, more experience, and, of course, the home field advantage as well. These two teams will rematch next year in Pasadena at the Rose Bowl for the return game. I expect that game to be much tougher. Well, the Sooners win. I, I said it was going to be a Sooner victory by 28 points, and that's exactly how it ended up. However, it was a little more high scoring than I thought. 49-21. The Sooners um, win the game, and again, they'll get ready for conference play uh, next week. Great job by the OU defense. And for uh, Kyler Murray, um, he, he's really, really growing up, and he had a solid effort as well. And we saw, of course, C.D. Lamb um, with his remarkable day, both receiving and special teams. Don't forget, I'll have my pregame show of OU Iowa State next week on this channel. My three picks for me and the coin go head-to-head, -head, picking three games apiece. And, of course, my postgame of OU Iowa State will be um, not long after the game. At least that's the plan. Sooners 49, UCLA 21. Boomer Sooner.